All right, trig fans, we're talking about scale changes of trig functions. So yesterday, um, we, or last night, you looked at the one set of videos about the basic sine, cosine, and tangent functions. And uh, then we worked on those in class uh, today. And now, tonight, you are talking about what happens when you do a scale change. And <clears throat> so uh, let's suppose our basic parent function was y equals cosine x. And we are doing what? We are stretching um, by 3. So that would be a horizontal stretch by 3. And we have a, a vertical shrink by 1 half. Remember the words stretch and shrink. Stretch means something over 3. Horizontally stretching by three. Okay, vertical sh shrinking means it's going to be between zero and one. Sorry, lost my train of thought there for a moment. I got derailed. Okay, that's kind of funny being a Purdue Boilermaker, but um, hopefully there were no hazardous materials on board uh, and we will not destroy large cities. Anyway, um, stretching by three, shrinking by one half. So let's think about our replacements. When we replace inside the function, what are we going to replace x with? We are going to replace it with, remember how we talked about using the opposite, replacing it with x over 3? And uh, even though we know we're stretching, that's what it's going to look like in the equation. And also, when we replace inside here for y, we have 2y, always replacing with what we see the opposite. Instead of dividing by 2, we substitute with 2y. Now, we always solve for y, so in doing so, we would uh, end up dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 half. So we, we would end up with something like this. Now, there is an alternative way of looking at it. Uh, and you might hear your friends or some of the other math teachers refer to something called fireproof form. Now, there's nothing magical about that phrase. Um, and in this particular case, it's going to look like this. y over b equals cosine of x over a. We haven't included any translations in this yet, so I haven't included what happens when you start adding and subtracting. But this is kind of what you would do. Now, what's a? Well, what's b in this particular example? Well, remember, our, our scale changes are always ax, by. So clearly, in this example, a is 3. Uh, maybe not so clear is that b is 1 half, right? Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So one way to look at this is y divided by half equals cosine of x over 3. That's another way. That, that would be called the, the, what a lot of the teachers, or some of the teachers refer to as fireproof form. So you might hear that, and, and uh, at least that's what you might see an equation written in that format. Well, the period, we know that for a cosine function, it starts out at 2 pi. But we are doing a horizontal stretch by 3, so we are multiplying by 3. So our new period is going to be 6 pi. The amplitude, now really what, what happens is that you're multiplying by the absolute value. But I will promise you that in regular trig, I will not try to trick you with a negative multiplier. Because negative multipliers will actually cause reflections to happen across the x-axis or the y-axis. And you guys are having such a, a difficult enough time just trying to get the scale changes down. And, okay, what's my period and what's the amplitude that flipping things will cause a lot of confusion, and so I'm not going to do that to you. Okay, so I, I promise, I here do solemnly swear that I will not have any negative multipliers causing them to flip over the x-axis or flip over the y-axis for your trig functions. There, I said it. The amplitude, well, that's the absolute value of the multiplier, technically. Okay, but once again, I said I wasn't going to do any um, 
And since the old amplitude was 1, right, the old amplitude was 1, and we are stretching it, or in this case shrinking it, by 1 half, then our new amplitude will be 1 half. That's a nice thing. If the amplitude of the original function is 1, then whatever you do to stretch or shrink it, that's the new amplitude. Very, very nice. So what does this look like when I graph it? Well, I always ask myself, well, what's the center line? Well, the center line hasn't changed. Um, and when we begin, right, we always begin with our first coordinate, which is at the maximum point, right? That's the first one we plot. And it would be how many units up? Oh, one half of a unit up, because that's the amplitude. And this one is goes all the way down to negative one half. So that's my first point that I plot. How far does it take before it repeats the pattern? Till I'm back to the same place again, starting the next cycle. Six pi units. Halfway in between, I'm all the way at the bottom. Halfway in between here, I'm at the center line. Halfway in between here, I'm at the center line draw my cosine wave. For those of you wondering, saying, wow, that doesn't look an awful lot like, uh, you know, looks an awful lot like what we did yesterday or last night or... Well, I understand that because we did a scale change. So what do you think I did with the scale? I changed it. Right, exactly. I changed it because we did a scale change. By changing the scale of the graph, I've made the picture pretty much look the same. Um, if I would give you the scale and you would have to plot it, you would have to find where 0, 1 half is and 6 pi, 1 half. All right? And then halfway in between at 3 pi, you'd have to be at negative 1 half and then in between, right? And then graph the curve. Okay. Well, here's another one. Here's, a, here's an equation, and I'm just asking you to graph it. Well, if it helps you to understand that what fireproof form is. Um, now, for those of you that don't know, I need to give you a little bit of lesson on, in algebra. 5x over 1. If you want to change that to its quote-unquote fireproof form, then what you should do is find the reciprocal of 5 and multiply the top and the bottom by that number. What happens on the top is it cancels out and on the bottom. So you would have x over one-fifth times one is just one-fifth. So this was a vertical stretch by two. That's your b value right there. And a a value. So that's a horizontal shrink by one-fifth. So let's think about our graph. What's our period? Well, the period is 2 pi times whatever you did to the horizontal direction, which is 1 fifth. So 2 pi over 5. After 2 pi over 5 units, it will start to repeat the pattern. And the amplitude was stretched by 2, so it goes from 1 to 2. So the highest value on my graph will be a 2, and the lowest value on my graph will be a negative 2. And how far will it take before it starts to repeat the pattern? We know that it starts at its highest point. How long is it taking before it's back in that same place? 2 pi over 5. Well, what's halfway in between? 1 pi over 5. And at that spot, we're not at the highest, we're not at the middle, we're at the lowest point. And halfway in between here and here, we're at the center line, and halfway in between here and here, we're also at the center line. And there's the basic shape of the graph. Now we need to do one with sine, just so you're, you know, you kind of remember what that, what happens with that. So let's suppose I had, um, um, hmm. um, so we started with y equals sine x, and we had a scale change rule of um, 2x and 3y.
So we're doing a stretch in both the vertical and the horizontal directions. We know that that's A, and we know that that's B. If you know anything about your graphs, you're going to have 2 pi times A, which is 4 pi. And your amplitude will be the absolute value of B, which is 3. Now remember your basic sine function. Basic sine function starts out at the origin instead of its highest point. It's back at the center line when it's repeating its pattern. 2 pi units later, but it's not 2 pi anymore, it's 4 pi. Halfway in between, it's back at the center line, but this time it's 2 pi, right? Halfway between 0 and 4 pi, it's 2 pi. Halfway in between here and here, which is at 1 pi, we're at our maximum result, which is 3, right? Because the amplitude is 3. And halfway in between here and here, we're at our lowest point, which is negative 3. And there's our basic sine wave with the scale changes that we were given. Now, what's the equation, the equation of this function after the scale change? Yes, because we just need to practice it, right? y over b equals sine of x over a. There's your fireproof form. If you solved it for y, another form of the same equation would look like that, okay? If you are struggling at all with understanding this and you want to double check some of your graphs to make sure you understand the points, go to that website www.desmos.com forward slash calculator. Choose the trig graph paper. Trig, trig, um, uh, let me just quickly jump over it on my, um, I'm finding it for you. Um, there's a little, in the upper right corner, there is a, a wrench. Okay. A wrench. Well, let's see if I can. Do, 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 do. Oh, this is going to be a poor job of a wrench, folks. Do, do, do. A little hole in the handle there. And when you click on the wrench, you'll see different types of graph paper show up. You want to go down to where it says trig settings, and you want to choose radians uh, and x-axis. Put it in increments of pi. Y-axis you can leave in increments of 1, 2, 3. But, so you want to switch, switch maybe to uh, radians. And you want the x-axis to be in increments of pi and 2 pi and 3 pi, so forth. Okay, but you can leave the y-axis in terms of 1, 2, and 3. Okay? And then that will help you um, make some, you know, different graphs. Just to check, you know, to double-check your work. So, those are the... So click on the wrench. You want to check radians, x-axis, and change it to those. Y-axis, change it to 1, 2, 3. And then you can change the, to the, the, the scale to the radian scale, and it'll be easier for you to graph your functions. Um, I'm trying to think if I really need to throw another sign one at you. I will say this, one of the things in the book talks about frequency. Frequency has a relationship to the period. And we will talk about this, especially as it comes up a little bit later. When you're given a graph and you want to find out what the period is from the graph, you have to go backwards and you actually have to take the frequency. How many times does it repeat the pattern in so many units? And when you do that, then you can find the period. So what's the relationship that they're showing you right here? The frequency is 1 over the period, so they are reciprocals of each other. Period and frequency are reciprocals. So if we talk about the period being 2 pi, so if the period is equal to 2 pi, then the frequency is 1 over 2 pi. Okay. Sorry, I probably can't see the 1 very well there. 
tangent function, y equals tangent x. If it's so hard to see these uh, vertical scale changes, which I promised you I wouldn't do them, then the only thing I could ch uh, ch do is maybe a, um, maybe I could do that, right? Ask you to graph y equals tangent 4x. Now, if you wanted that in the uh, fireproof form, remember the trick where I showed you, take 4x over 1, Find the reciprocal of that and multiply top and bottom by it, giving you x over 1 quarter. So we actually are doing a shrink, a horizontal shrink, by 1 quarter. So here's a ba basic graph. If you're doing a shrink by 1 quarter, what's the period of the function? Well, the old period was pi, right? But you're shrinking it by a quarter, so the new period would be pi over 4. Now, to blow your mind even farther, if the distance between this, this uh, vertical asymptote on the left and this vertical asymptote on the right, if that distance is pi over 4, half the distance has to be on the left side and half of it has to be on the right side. So that must mean that this is pi over 8 and this is negative pi over 8. Because everything has been shrunk by a quarter. So if the vertical asymptote was pi over 2, right? It was pi over 2, but you did a vertical shrink by a quarter, then the new vertical asymptote has to be pi over 8, and the other one would be on the other side, would be negative pi over 8. And we know that it has the same basic shape, and I promised you I wouldn't be doing all these uh, changes So uh, to the vertical uh, asymptote, or vertical, I shouldn't say, I should say I'm not going to start stretching and shrinking it this way, because it's too tough to tell me. Now, what would be the next one up? If this is 0 pi over 8, and this is 1 pi over 8, this would be 2 pi over 8, this would be 3 pi over 8. Okay? We'll do more examples of that in class.